Hi, my name's uh, Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and in this video I'm going to look at black and white printing on the Canon G550. Now this is a G500 series, so it covers lots of other printers as well. G650, for example, has a scanner on top, same basic printer inside, and uh, it has different model numbers in different parts of the world. Uh, so it's usually identified just as a G500 series, which applies to what's inside it, which is uh, dye-based inks, six of them, black, grey, then cyan, magenta, yellow, and red. Now, some people have said, ah, it's got a grey ink. That means it must be good for black and white. Um, not so fast. Um, grey inks, and I, I've, I've looked at this elsewhere in videos looking at different inks, what they mean, which is important, and various things like that. The grey ink in this case is more about allowing you to use strong colours. So you mix it so you don't need uh, so much strong colour to make light colours. It, it's all about ink mixing. Yes, the grey might make a difference in black and white, but that's not really its prime purpose here. Um, the important thing about black and white printing here, now I'm doing this on a Mac, uh, which limits it somewhat because Canon have chosen to use the AirPrint driver. Now that's limited and doesn't allow me proper colour management. However, I have done a video about making profiles, and you can create profiles. Certainly on Windows systems as well, you can create profiles and they work perfectly well for, for printing. Um, you do need, if you want the best results from a printer like this, you need some custom profiles for the paper. Canon don't provide profiles for their papers, so you're, if you're using third-party papers, look for a supplier that perhaps offers free custom profiles if you buy some paper. Um, I know several in the UK that do that, and it's one way of potentially getting reasonable results from this printer. Now, to say reasonable results, I've looked at it in using colour, and uh, there's a test image I've used, and the black and white section of the test image looks okay with a profile. Now, I've tested all the different ways you can print black and white on this printer, which is why I have a huge great collection of my black and white test image and various prints, various settings. If you're going to do stuff like this, do remember to write on the back what the settings were because you'll never remember otherwise. And as a result of this testing, and that's precisely what this test image was created for, I can tell that for, to get the best black and white results, I don't use the printer's black and white print mode in the driver, because that produces prints which are whilst relatively neutral, they have a colour cast. Uh, this is trying it with Canon papers as well as third party papers. Um, the evenness is not quite as good as I like, but you know, it's, it's there, it's a simple option to try if you want to print black and white. Um, personally, I wouldn't do it. Nor is printing your black and white image as a colour image using just the driver particularly successful. Um, the images just don't look quite right. So we come down to using profiles. Now, I wouldn't normally suggest using colour profiles for printing black and white, but it's as good as you get with this. Um, the, there are not the capabilities to do any of the more advanced stuff. If you're really into black and white, I would say you want a better printer than this. If you're looking for a Canon printer, the dye-based Pro 200, as well as being bigger, this is just A4, as well as being larger, it, it, it prints very good colour and pretty good black and white. If you want much better, go to the Pro 300. That has pigment inks. Pigment inks work for black and white printing. Uh, there you're going to get potentially really good black and white results. But this is about making do with what I've got here. And it's one of the reasons why I'm testing this printer, to see what you could actually get if you stretch it beyond the standard approach a bit. So I'm going to uh, use uh, Canon premium fine art rough paper. Now, that's an art paper. I wouldn't normally use textured ones for black and white at small sizes like this because I feel the texture intrudes on the image far too much. Or if you've got an image that needs it, uh, the texture can cover up deficiencies in the image. It's really a matter of taste. 
Now, I'm looking at, um, I've already tested this on a luster paper uh, with a black and white image here. And I have two versions. There's a print printed using my profile. Um, comes out quite nicely. Um, unfortunately, the shadows are crunched up. Now, this is one of the things that this test image allowed me to look at. And if you plot a graph of it, and I've got much more about this in the written articles, this is not really something I can cover easily in, uh, in the videos. But if you look at one of the graphs, you can see a slight crunching up towards the bottom. That signifies that the blacks are being crushed. It shows in this particular picture with a lack of detail in the shadow areas. So I'm printing from Photoshop. You could use something like Affinity Photo or anything like that that allows an adjustment curve to be produced. And I'm adding a simple adjustment curve that just boosts the shadows, boosts the contrast of the shadows. It keeps the black point where it is, but just makes the near blacks a little bit brighter. And this is going to be almost impossible to show on the, on the video here, but between the two pictures, uh, there is some dark detail in the corner here, and the detail is more visible on the one with the curve applied than it is on the one without the curve applied. Now, these are sort of, you know, some people say this is splitting hairs, but this is about getting black and white pictures that look the way I want them to look. I have edited it to how I want it to look. I know it'll be different on a print, but where I've got shadows open on this image here, I really want the shadows open here. Now, print and screen are two very different things, so you, you have to allow. And once again, that's one of the reasons why I've got this black and white test image. There's a video about using this image, and it's available for download in different versions, different sizes, on the Northlight site. It's been around for years. People use it, uh, thousands of downloads of it, so I know a lot of people use that image for testing black and white. But anyway, I know that an adjustment curve was required for this particular print. However, I'm going to print on this one here. A slightly different curve is required, but still it's the same basic shape. It's just to boost the shadows a bit, open up the shadows a little bit. So I've loaded a sheet here, fine art rough paper, and I've set the media type to fine art rough on here. I like to set the media type when I load paper on the printer, as well as the driver, because well, it saves me getting things wrong. Um, if you only use one paper, then you needn't particularly bother. But um, I use lots of different papers, and it has, over the years, saved me quite a lot of paper. But anyway, let's just go to the image. This is, um, I should say, um, an old version of Photoshop I'm using here. You don't need the latest and greatest. I'm running it on an oldish laptop. It's Photoshop CS6. All the functions that I need for all my work are available in Photoshop CS6. Now, that doesn't mean I won't use a newer Photoshop, especially with some of its new whistles and bells that's been announced with it, but um, for the basics of adding curves, of printing, and things like that, this just works. Um, I also don't have a subscription for this one. Uh, it was the last one you could actually buy. But you could use, if you want an approach to this, you could use something like Affinity Photo. That's a pretty good bit of software, you buy it, you get updates for it. It's, you know, basic one. It's relatively cheap and very good. But anyway, I've opened this here in Photoshop. I'm just going to go to print it and go to the print dialog here. And it opens up. Here's the image. Uh, the picture is of steps up to the chapter house at Wells Cathedral. It's um, it's coming in here as a somewhat ludicrous print resolution because this image is actually one I've created for printing A2 size, so about, about that big. Um, so it's a ridiculously high resolution here. That doesn't really matter because the printer driver will take care of that, certainly on a small print like this. So we've got it set here. I've set Photoshop Manager's colour and I've set the printer profile to G550 Fine Art Rough, high quality. I want high quality because I found with this printer that unlike some of the more expensive ones, you can actually see a slight difference uh, between ordinary quality and fine quality. It just takes about five minutes to print rather than a couple of minutes to print. And that's not a problem here. So um, I'm going to set this here. I've set for the printer settings 
Um, I have a preset set for Fine Art uh, Rough, which is this paper here. It's the only art paper that you can set on the printer here. And I've set the quality and that's, that's all set there. We're set for that. Um, I'm printing relative colorimetric and I've enabled black point compensation. Um, now that makes relative colorimetric. Um, I just tend to print my black and white stuff using that. Black point compensation sets the black point of or how black a black you'll get. Uh, matches up some issues with profiles. It doesn't cause any harm if you select it and it's not needed. It is needed on the relative colorimetric rendering intent. Um, it just improves shadow detail, gets you blacker blacks. But anyway, I've got everything set there, so I'm just going to click on print. Well, the printer has woken up after a little bit. Um, the paper handling on this G550 is very good. Has no difficulty with a thick media like this. Now, I have not noticed any marks on thick media, but do check because um, you, you might have a printer which is not quite aligned properly and it marks some heavy papers. Um, if you get a new printer, I would always say, and it has problems, don't just go, oh, well, that's annoying. Contact Canon or Epson and say, my printer isn't working as it should. Um, you know, they, I know of people who've had this, who've had duff printers out of the box. It happens. It happens with any product. It doesn't happen very often, but people have had one. So if you have problems with a new printer, always go back to the supplier or the actual manufacturer. Uh, depends where you are as to what the best procedure is, but um, certainly uh, it, you know, if this one had a fault out of the box, I'd go straight back to Canon, likewise for Epson. Well, here comes the print. Um, there are no marks on the leading edge, no smudging or anything like that. If you do see stuff like that, um, one of the first things to suspect is that you have paper curl. If your paper's not flat, then sometimes the curvature of it at the leading edge can cause the head to touch, can leave marks. Uh, there are no other marks on the paper at all, that's good. That can indicate problems with your paper feed. Um, you know, this is a relatively new printer, so I'm not expecting any problems. But it's always worth a quick check of any print that you're making, just to have a look at it and see what's, how it's coming out. Um, the dye-based inks here dry pretty quickly on these papers. Uh, there's no problem, so there's no smudging. And uh, yeah, that's, that looks good. We'll see when it comes out. Ah, there we have one print. Um, it's come out rather well. If I look at this, this is an image I know well, what sort of problems do I see with it? Well, it's on an art paper, which means relatively low contrast. Certainly compared with the sort of contrast I get on a lustre paper. So the blacks are blacker on the lustre paper. Uh, the blacks aren't particularly black on this printer. Um, if I had to say amongst in the ink set of this, the, the black is the, the weakest link in the, in the ink set here in terms of what it does. But this is a low contrast image. Um, I don't expect harsh, sharp contrasts. This is a very different bit of architecture than this one here. Um, makes a distinct difference. The ch your choice of paper, now as I said I wouldn't normally choose um, a textured profile, a textured paper here, but it doesn't impinge too much. It gives a fairly delicate look and under this lighting, which is um, LED halogen replacement, it's also a fairly neutral grey. Now I might tweak the contrast a little bit in the image to print it to generate a little bit more contrast in some areas of the print. But in general, it covers the softness of the stone and the wear of the steps. It covers it very well. By the way, the picture here at St. Wells Cathedral, it's based on one taken by F.H. Evans, I believe in 1905, quite a famous architectural photo. Although his is uh, rather smaller field of view but taken from the same place. Uh, he didn't have the benefits of uh, the 17mm shift lens I was using which gives the particular look that you've got here. 
Now anyway, so there we have a black and white, but we've got two black and white pictures. How good is this printer for black and white? What I would say is that if you want to get into black and white, then it's actually not bad. I print black and white a lot, I exhibit black and white, I produce large black and white prints. So to me, I could see problems with this, but this is actually, it's usable. Um, certainly good and relatively cheap with these ink tanks for experimenting. If you really get into black and white, and what I would say is that if you start off with a printer like this and after a while the limitations that I can see in this printer start to become obvious to you, then that's time that maybe you want to think about getting a more expensive printer, pigment inks perhaps, and concentrating more on black and white. Just to show one other bit again, this is, as I say, using a profile and it's relatively neutral in this lighting. It's also relatively neutral in daylight as well. This is on the same paper printed using the black and white mode. Now to me this is almost a duotone. It has a bluish steely grey colour to it which I find most unsettling. Um, I really do not want my pictures looking, my black and white pictures looking that colour. If I want pictures that colour I'll print them that colour. I don't expect to print black and white and for it to come out like that. Um, so there we have, there is what the printer is capable of, the good profile, and there is the black and white basic print mode. Um, what I would say is that if you are going to be printing black and white, get some profiles for it. Um, because otherwise you will have pictures like that. Um, somebody showed me a picture like that. I'm afraid the colour cast leaps out at me so much that it's, it ruined the picture. Yeah, I go as far as that. However, that looks quite reasonable. Even that one. I'm not a great fan of the size I'm, of the glossy papers. I'd prefer a slightly more textured one. Now. This is a luster paper though. Um, so there you have it. Uh, yes, you can do black and white on the G550. Just needs a bit of care. And um, with that care, I don't see why you shouldn't be able to do quite a bit of experimenting with black and white photography. And of course, the ink's relatively cheap as well. So uh, you can waste lots of paper uh, learning to perfect your black and white photography. Anyway, hope that's been of some use. Um, I say the test image is available on the Northlight site, uh, free for download. And I've got quite a lot of other uh, videos about black and white printing, black and white photography, and much more on the website in articles since I've been writing about black and white, digital black and white for nearly 20 years. So I have made an awful lot of prints on this. But anyway, hope you've enjoyed it. Please do subscribe to the channel if you find it interesting. I've got lots of other stuff and um, thank you for watching.